you're here on behalf of the Urology Care Foundation, and uh, the stats are really alarming for African American men in terms of prostate cancer. I had a, a dear friend of mine, Miles Simon, who of course uh, led Arizona to a national championship. His dad just passed from cancer. My dad died from cancer as well. His dad died from cancer that originally started in the prostate. Um, how did you get involved? Well, actually, I, at the Hall of Fame, they had their very first screening back in 2008. And, um, and I was working at the NFL at the time. They asked me to go down there and see how it was going. And why I went down, these ladies said, hey, why don't you do it? And it's a simple blood test. Oh, okay, I'll do it. Well, they called me in. They, uh, the doctor gave me my stats and started asking me a lot of questions. And I realized how ignorant I was about my own health, especially my prostate health. But he scared me when he gave me the statistics. One in five African-American men will get this disease. If it runs in your family, one in three. And now it's one in seven men will be diagnosed with this disease in their lifetime. When you compare that to one in eight women who are going to be diagnosed with breast cancer, we all seem to know a lot about breast cancer, but don't know anything about prostate cancer. So I found out that those, you know, that information forced me to, when I got back home, call my primary care doctor looked at my chart and went over my numbers and thought maybe I was a candidate for a biopsy. And that's how I found out. So the biopsy came back positive and uh, I was really surprised because it didn't really feel like I had any symptoms. Um, but it's a disease that men just need to know about. Most importantly, they need to know if it runs in their family, you know, so that they can catch it when it's treatable. It's a real treatable disease. Yeah, the, the, uh, the survival rate, the five-year survival rate is nearly 100% for people who can detect and treat the disease early. So I, I, I'm guessing you got it early, you caught it early? Yes, but by luck. I was in the right place at the right time. And so this campaign is uh, you know, trying to get men to make the right choices in life when it comes to their health. When, when, we, when we watch, Malcolm Butler's an incredible story for the Pats, right? Awesome, yeah. I mean, undrafted from nothing. And it's one thing to make, like we saw Larry Brown get two interceptions in the Super Bowl and be a Super Bowl MVP with the Dallas Cowboys, signed a big deal with the Raiders, was never that level of player. No. Butler's done the opposite now. He came from nothing, made the big play in the Super Bowl, and then has become their best cornerback. How, is, how has he come from uh, such little fanfare to being such an important cog in what statistically, by, by, by some stats, is the best defense in football? Well, I have to say he's, he's hungry. You know, he didn't come in as a high draft choice. He had a chance to make some plays. He made those plays, but he also knows that it, tomorrow is not guaranteed. You got to keep making those plays. And I think he's, uh, he's found himself in a good situation being with the Patriots who are dedicated to winning, love championships, great coaching, great organization, and, uh, you know, people who will work with him at getting better. You were a Hall of Famer, a, a, a two-time All-American going back to college. Uh, Michael Haynes joined us on the Doug Gottlieb Show, CBS Sports Radio. The position and style has changed some. Um, I kind of think, and I could be wrong, because, look, I'm not old enough to say I saw you play live in the prime of your career. I'm going based upon what everybody says and, frankly, what my dad used to tell me. I kind of think you would be even better now. Is that is that accurate based upon how you used to play? Well, I, uh, I'd like to say, I'd like to think that's right. Uh, I can tell you that um, back in when I did play, there would be hardly any balls thrown my way. And today, even with the great cornerbacks that they have, they still find a way or a reason to throw at them. So I would like to, I would love to be playing But today. see, I, you had, you were, I mean, you were really athletic, but you were long. I mean, right. I'm long. Lo I'm fast. I ran a 4'4", four, four, you know, maybe 4'3 on turf. I had a 43-inch vertical. Uh, my, my arms are like a 38-inch sleeve. Right. So you know, and, and you, you, were the, yeah. you were the kind of guy, there was a lot of Richard Sherman to how you played in that you were, you, you know, you had great ball skills and people didn't challenge you. Whereas now, and, and that was during a time where you could be really, really physical, but you didn't have to be as physical because you were such an elegant athlete. So that, that's why I've always just assumed based upon reputation, you'd be great because now you can't touch guys. You have to be long in order to make these plays. Right. And they, they actually changed that five yard bump rule probably in my fourth year or something like that. Uh, so I was, most of my career, I was playing under that same kind of conditions that the guys are playing under now. Um, my rookie year was a lot more fun. You know, if you're going up against a super talented guy, you really could beat him up all the way down the field until the ball was in the air. Um, those days are gone, but most of my career was the way it is today. How would you cover a Julio Jones? How do you, I mean, like that, he's big, he's strong, he's athletic, uh, and he seems to be a pretty good route runner. But as a guy who's among the best to ever cover guys like that, how do you do it? Now that's a good question. So I didn't really cover a lot of guys like Julio Jones in my career. 
Um, but I would like to think that you know he probably does not like bump and run because he's so tall. Usually the tall guys don't like it, but if he's really perfected getting away from the release, you know, because a lot of guys could do that, so especially they, they know they're going to get that uh, kind of coverage. I just have to say you have to be on him tight, and then uh, you have to be a better athlete than he is, which is really, really hard because he's such a good leaper. And the quarterbacks today, they have that back shoulder fade. They didn't have that when I played, really, and that's a difficult throw.